So in this session of mine, I'll be discussing about regulation of gene expression in eukaryotes. We all know that eukaryotic organisms have well-defined nucleus and a complex genome, as a result of which the expression of gene or the synthesis of protein has to be regulated in a very well-controlled manner. Now, within the multicellular organisms, different cells perform different function, which is also known as a differentiation of cells. And depending upon their function, their requirement of the proteins is also different. So, some cells require one particular protein, whereas other cells may require a different protein. So, uh, out of the, and all the cells within the multicellular organism have a unique genome. So, in, um, in, in result, we finally come to a conclusion that only one particular genes have to get activated within a specific cell. So, in order to bring a, such a regulated or a controlled expression, it uh, uh, goes through various checkpoints. And I'll be discussing about these various uh, checkpoints or the uh, re, uh, stages where the expression of gene is controlled. Now moving to the next slide, unlike prokaryotes, in eukaryotes, expression of gene into proteins can be controlled at various locations. Synthesis of proteins is controlled right from the chromatin stage. Expression of gene is controlled at many steps during the process of transcription and translation. Now the next slide uh, tells about the uh, control within the chromatin stage which is the very first stage. Now the mechanisms which bring about control in the chromatin stage are histone modifications and methylation of DNA. Now the role of histone modification in transcriptional activation has been dealt with in detail in another video of mine which has been already uploaded into YouTube. So I'll be discussing about methylation of DNA. So what happens during methylation of DNA? So within a DNA, especially within the major groove of a DNA, uh, there are certain regions which are rich in CG, that is rich in cytosine and guanine. So G will pair with cytosine on this side and C will pair with guanine on this side. So this dinucleotide CG is represented as CPG. Just to say, uh, just to mean that uh, the cytosine and guanine residues are linked with the phosphodiester bond. So these are also known as the CPG islands. That, that means the regions which are rich in uh, CG are also known as the CPG rich islands. And uh, uh, with the help of certain methyl transferases, the cytosine residue gets methylated. So the target site for the methylation is the cytosine residue to form 5 methyl. Cyto 5-methyl five, five cytosine. Now, uh, what happens as a result of methylation at this particular point? Various transcription factors are able to bind at these CG-rich regions. So, the transcription factors bind at this CG-rich region. bind at uh, CG rich regions and in order to bind to these CG rich regions they require a free cytosine residue. So this cytosine residue should be free. Once it has got methylated and these transcription factors fail to recognize it as a result of which the transcriptional level is decreased. So greater is the methylation lesser will be the transcription. So this is how it controls the uh, uh, transcription process. So the target uh, sites for methylation are cited in residues which exist as dinucleotides, CG also written as CPG and increased methylation of cited in residue reduces the transcriptional activity. Now moving to the next slide, regulation of transcription. This is the next stage at which the uh, uh, gene gets, uh, the expression of gene gets regulated. Now say suppose this is a gene uh, say suppose this is the entire uh, DNA out of which we have the desired gene which has to get expressed over here and this expression of the of this particular gene is under the control of certain promoters which are situated um, just 40 base pairs upstream of this gene or uh, these are known as the basal promoters or the core promoters examples of which are cat and tata boxes and certain uh, ba uh, certain promoters which are situated around 200 base pairs upstream of the desired gene and these are known as upstream promoters apart from them uh, there are other um, regulatory factors also like enhancers 
now the enhancers can be situated at any uh, place Enhancers can be situated at any place that is they can be situated they can be located upstream downstream that is below the gene or within the gene within the structural gene and how do these enhancers act they have two binding sites that is one which binds the transcriptional factors and the other which binds to the DNA so suppose the enhancer is located over here now uh, and the promoter is in this particular region so uh, when it has to increase the transcriptional activity of this gene the enhancer loops back that is it folds and recognizes the or binds to the transcription factors which are uh, located on the promoter region and as a result of this particular combination of transcription factors uh, promoter and the enhancer this particular gene gets transcribed so the basal promoters are the core promoters these promoters reside within 40 base pairs upstream of the start site these promoters are seen in all protein coding genes example the cat boxes and the tata boxes upstream promoters these promoters may may lie up to 200 base pairs upstream of the transcriptional initiation site the structure of this promoter and the associated binding factors keeps varying from genes to gene and the enhancers as I discussed and uh, the mechanism of their control is almost similar to like uh, similar to that of a safe present in a bank there are series of locks which safeguard the uh, safe within the bank any mismatch between the lock and key does not allow us to reach to the safe in the same way a perfect combination between the promoters transcription factors and enhancers in turn regulates the desired gene to get transcribed or suppressed so moving to the next slide which tells about regulation of RNA processing now once the RNA has been synthesized uh, what is the next step that is addition of a cap at the 5 prime terminal So, so suppose this is an mRNA uh, addition of a cap uh, cap at a five prime terminal and a, a poly a tail at the three prime terminal and an mRNA we know that an mRNA contains of number of coding regions and non coding regions the coding regions are all known as exons and the non coding regions are known as introns during RNA processing exon shuffling takes place that is says uh, suppose these two exons combine together and excise or really uh, leave out this particular intron so an intron is left out and these two exons join together these two exons join together and ultimately this mRNA gets translated to produce one particular kind of protein similarly these two exons can join together and ultimately get translated to produce a different kind of protein so the functions produced uh, functions performed by these two different kinds of proteins are quite different uh, so this is how the um, expression of gene is controlled at this step that is after RNA has got synthesized depending upon the final combination of exons after splicing different kinds of proteins are obtained which can perform different functions in the cell the next slide shows diagrammatically how this happens that is say suppose these are the four different kinds of exons the cell one has a different protein a different combination of exons and cell 2 has a different combination of exons and uh, finally the proteins which are produced in cell 1 and cell 2 will perform completely different functions now moving to the next point that is regulation of RNA transport now once the RNA has got synthesized the fate of RNA decides uh, is dependent upon its uh, function so suppose the one particular RNA is meant for protein synthesis then it will get transported to the cytoplasm via the nuclear pores why because in the cytoplasm it meets the ribosomes and in turn the protein synthesis takes place within the cytoplasm whereas those protein those RNAs which are not destined for the protein synthesis remain within the nucleus so this again decides whether uh, which kind of protein is being synthesized or um, uh, what